<sighs> is he talking about Sprint? Is this a video about Sprint? No, it, this is not a video about Sprint. But what we're actually here to talk about today is about physics and how it applies to movement in Halo Infinite. So welcome everybody back to the channel and let's get right into it. So here I am in Halo Infinite, just doing a simple back and forth stray from left to right. And without any context, you might, things look normal, you might not see anything. But trust me, there's something wrong with this clip. Now here I am doing the same exact thing in Halo Reach. And there's a minor difference that you're not going to see until I point it out to you. But I swear, I'm not trying to waste your time here. This teeny tiny difference makes a world of difference in Halo's combat loop. Okay, let's point out the difference here. Do you see how in the Halo Reach clip, I'm not moving at a constant speed? How there's an acceleration curve to my movement? I'm not moving consistently throughout the entire clip. As I change direction, there is a teeny tiny, almost minuscule penalty for changing direction. That as my character moves from side to side, I have to slow down before speeding back up whenever I change direction. Here's a clip of me doing the exact same thing at 150% movement speed to exaggerate the effect. You can see it much more clearly here. Now here's a clip of me running up a ramp in Halo Reach at 300% movement speed. You can see that I even get a little bit of air time. My character jumps even though I haven't hit the jump button. And when I stop moving, when I let go of the controller, my character still is moving before slowing down to a complete stop. Now here's a clip of Halo Infinite with movement speed scaled up to 300%. You can see that as I move back and forth, I'm able to change direction instantly. This is because acceleration in Halo Infinite is instantaneous. What I'm trying to demonstrate to you here is a key difference between how Halo Infinite and Legacy Halo handle the physics that are associated with the player movement. Because movement in Halo Infinite has instantaneous acceleration, or near instantaneous acceleration, it's hard to impart a sense of momentum to the player's movement. And because there's very little momentum in Halo Infinite, it's very hard to swallow the fact that you are actually playing as a one-ton super soldier. Okay, so all of this is really cute and silly, but am I blowing this out of proportion? Am I just complaining about nothing? Is this really that important? Well, trust me, it gets much more potent and it has heavy implications to Halo's combat. You see, Halo is a very peculiar game series. It's not trying to be overly realistic, and when it does break realism, it's usually explained through the lore. You're not a regular human when you play as a Spartan. Other games are trying to be realistic, so what they'll usually do is they'll give you a penalty to your accuracy while you're moving. In games like Counter-Strike, this can get so severe that movement while shooting is discouraged or even impossible. Halo is much different. In Halo, you are fully encouraged, or maybe even required at the professional level, to maintain maximum movement and maximum accuracy simultaneously. Moving and shooting go together. They are two sides as the same coin, whereas in other games, they are two completely separate skill gaps. Because moving and shooting aren't exclusive in Halo, they both feature at the same time within Halo's combat loop. As you are trying to shoot your opponent as accurately as possible, they're trying to jump around and strafe to make themselves as hard as possible to hit. And as they shoot at you, you are also trying to make yourself as hard as possible to hit. So within Halo's combat loop, historically you've seen a number of different tactics within strafing. You can crouch, you can jump, you can even crouch jump. You can change directions from back and forth, or you can potentially be so good, have such good reaction time, and be so aware that you can use your knowledge of how weapons fire within the game's sandbox and pace your movement around them. Basically using the rhythm of your opponent's rate of fire and changing your movement accordingly. What acceleration and momentum do within Halo's combat loop is provide rules, limitations, parameters of what can be accomplished. And it's because of these limits that movement, momentum, inertia become resources that the player has to manage and that this ability to manage a movement becomes a skill gap. Because of this, player movement is diverse, there's variety, and depending on the situation, different tactics will have different degrees of success. Because player movement in Halo Infinite is so fluid and so snappy and so responsive, there is essentially one dominant form of strafing all of the time. 
simply moving back and forth from side to side in a rapid motion and not jumping, crouching, and ignoring the other 99% of Halo Infinite's admittedly expanded movement physics. Sprint in this game is handled phenomenally, definitely an improvement over Halo 4 and 5, and 343 has actually managed to split to settle this debate between the community. It's brilliant. Sprint isn't a means of moving around the map faster, but rather a gateway expanded movement. Sliding, jump sliding. There are so many different combinations that you can now do in Halo Infinite that you couldn't do in previous games, and it's all because of Sprint. But most of that you can simply ignore because strafing from back to and forth rapidly essentially allows you to teleport in two different places at once, and your opponent now has to guess where you're going to be. Seriously, performing a simple and gentle jitter back and forth rapidly is one of the best strafing methods in this game, and it throws off PC players especially because they don't have reticle magnetism that I mentioned in my previous video to help them clutch against movement which is now so snappy and so responsive that Spartans can seemingly just move around at limitless speeds at full speed in every direction at once with no regard for how their ankles are going to feel afterwards. Here's an analogy to demonstrate my point. Let us consider two 18-wheeler Mack trucks, tractor trailers that weigh an average of 35 tons unloaded. One of these trucks is going to go faster, say 60 miles an hour, and one will go slower, 30 miles an hour. We can say that of these two trucks, the one that is moving faster is either going to need more time or distance to come to a complete stop, assuming that both of these trucks are braking with the same force. If these trucks were instead Spartans in Halo Infinite, it's like they only need 6 inches to come to a complete stop, and they could reverse course and go 180 degrees in the opposite direction with very little, if any, loss in total velocity. Here's the problematic difference between Halo Infinite and Halo Reach. Remember the duality of strafing and shooting? Well, in Halo Infinite, you can change direction so quickly that your opponent doesn't have the time or the reaction speed to catch up to your movement. You can change direction so quickly that you can just phase out of your opponent's reticle almost as if you're teleporting away from it. Now you understand a crucial part of why the infinite sniper is so difficult to use. Not only does it suffer from the tiny reticle syndrome I discussed in my previous video, but now because players can change direction so quickly in Halo Infinite, it's like players can move out of the way and cause you to miss before your input can even reach the game, before the game can even process the fact that you fired. Because the movement acceleration curve is different in Halo Reach, there comes with it a sense of inertia, and when you change direction, the game is slightly penalizing you. This is to give other players who are aiming at you a small guarantee that for at least the next few milliseconds, you will continue moving in, the, in that same direction. This teeny tiny, seemingly insignificant mechanic is what makes precision weapons so much more usable. This mechanic has been changed in Halo Infinite, giving a passive nerf to every single precision weapon in the sandbox. The commando, the battle rifle, the... Uh, I'm blanking on the name. What's it called? Uh, the, that, that, uh, the sniper rifle? You get my point. <laughs> what I'm saying is that moving back and forth, strafing in Halo Infinite, is overpowered. And this video is going on nine minutes. It took nine minutes to say that. God damn, I need a life. If you've gotten this far, please support my work. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Now, like I said, all the same gravy that exists in Halo Reach is still in Halo 4. You can even change the acceleration scale in the custom game settings. So, theoretically, 343 would only just have to basically flip a switch to fix everything. However, it's not exactly always the same thing, because the acceleration curve in Halo Reach is different. So, if you basically take the A and the D key and spam them back and forth rapidly, you won't go anywhere. Whereas in Halo Infinite, you'll go a meter or two. The same acceleration is still in Halo Infinite, and if you adjust the movement speed up to 300% and do the back and forth strafing thing, you can see it.
but it's just not nearly to the same degree as it was in previous Halo games or what I would like it to be. Okay, so I mentioned that there's the ability to modify the acceleration value in the custom game settings menu. So how does how, how well does that work? It turns out pretty well. I was pretty solid in my prediction. Precision weapons do feel a little bit more consistent when you turn the acceleration scale to about 60, 70, or 80%. Enemies aren't able to dodge your reticle as easily, and there's more they're more firmly planted on your screen and less able to just slide back and forth, making them untrackable. So yeah, this video is coming up on 11 minutes and I made the entire thing simply to ask 343 Industries to adjust the acceleration values for player movement in Halo Infinite. You can adjust them yourself in the settings menu. I've experimented with 70 or 80%. I've gone as low as 60, I think it's too bad. The gameplay that you're seeing on screen right now is of that. Precision weapons feel much more consistent. The commando is actually usable. The stalker rifle is still... Uh... And even with the mouse and keyboard, it feel things feel much better, and it feels like it would be good if the reticles were as big as they were in Halo 3 and Halo Reach. Assuming that the bullet magnetism would scale to match them. Tracking and tracing your targets just feels more fluent, and enemies aren't able to just teleport and slip and slide outside of your reticle. It doesn't feel as good as Halo Reach does, but I think... 70 or 80% acceleration scale should definitely be made the new default for matchmaking. So, yeah, that's 12 minutes of nitpicking, incredibly minor details about a game that is quite honestly already pretty good, even if the changes I've mentioned in this video aren't implemented. But please, 343, if you're listening, please. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to get a channel going where we go super in-depth about talking about the nitty-gritty of Halo Infinite. Weapon balancing, customization, progression, it's all on the table when dedicated to improving the game. Thank you for watching.